Um, if you look on the video screens, you'll see a um, image of John Lotshaw, who um, was one of the um, web comics panelists on, um, yeah, st st still, still up there? Good. Um, he was on our web comics panel for about 15 years running before his uh, sudden passing last November. He created the webcomic Accidental Centaurs, but that's only one of his influences. He was an amazing tech genius who um, was the National Cartoon Society uh, go-to guy for any uh, te technical problem that usually sprung up during the Rubin Awards and usually always did. Um, he was also just a really nice guy. He was, and had a wide range of interests. He was the publisher of a uh, collection of web comics uh, from his own imprint, Moonbase Press. His influence was far and wide ac across web comics. And he's left a hole that could really never be filled because his skill set was so unique. Um, we, in the past 10 months since his passing, we really realized all the things that we relied on him for, just for technical advice and his creativity. So this is just spotlighting his influence and everything he meant to us in the webcomics field and um, Godspeed John Lotshaw. Can, can I add to that really yeah. fast before we... Yeah. So John was a really cool guy, like super knowledgeable, but like when we're talking about technical skill, guys, I don't think we can all appreciate how hard doing webcomics was at one point in time. Like now you're like, oh, I'm gonna cut up my webtoon and I'm gonna post it, or actually like even webtoon cuts up your webtoon for you now. Amazing. But the kind of technical know-how that you needed at one point to do web comics back in the day of early, early, early computers and early internet what? is mind blowing. What was the year that he was posting it? Like, yeah. like he would build the page yeah. yes. for the co for the post, not for the yes. comic strip. Yeah. For that day's post. What yes. was the year that uh, he was he was doing? Uh, that? Lots of, that was two thousand three when he launched his strip. Um, he no, like yours. Yeah. He was posting yeah. yours. Yeah. And what what year was that? Um, th that was a little later when he was actually posting mine around two thousand eight. Yeah. But um, one thing John really hated was WordPress, <laughs> um, and he decided to take the time and build an a a WordPress simulation from scratch, taking out all the stuff that made WordPress so hard to work with. What was left? Yeah, exactly. He, he, he was literally building it from, from, from scratch. Um, and he was that, his knowledge was that granular um, that he could take, take something from nothing and build it without any um, bringing in any previously written code. Yeah, he just coded out himself. And mm -hmm. so we thank all of you guys for coming before us and building the structures. Because yes. we try to write code yeah. back in the day. And I was like, screw this mm -mm. noise. This sucks. Yeah. I don't think we're ever going to do yeah. it. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, he, he said his father uh, was in computers in the 60s and 70s, and when he was growing up, his father told him, if you're, if you're going to use computers, you, knew how to, you have to know how to write code. So he came at it honestly from childhood. And I, and I want to say he said something about punch cards. Yes. I mean, like, yes. like right when, I think when his dad said write code, he meant like punch, punch cards. cards. Exactly. <laughs> this is the 1970s we're talking about wild so anyways i just wanted to say that because we don't appreciate yeah. what it was 
because it's yeah. almost like we can't wrap our minds around it anymore. And now, now everything has a template, and mm -hmm. you just down, download template. It's there because of people like John. Thank you, John. One more round of yeah. applause yeah. for John. Yeah. Because yeah. hell yeah, thank yeah. you for making it so much easier yeah. for us and that we don't have to write our fresh page of, page of code every day every when we day. put up our every artwork. Work. Yes. All right, now we should start the panel. So yes. Bill, do you want to start by introducing yourself? Yes, I am Bill Holbrook. I do Kevin and Kel, which is now the, since 1995, the longest continuously running daily webcomic. Um, still, still have never, never missed a day. Damn. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jenny, I'm sorry. <laughs> so close. Your mom now. Soon. <laughs> oh, no, I hope not. God, I hope not. Never mind. Um, I hope I, I hope I never win that. Um, uh, my name's Jenny Breeden. I do a, a journal mm -hmm. slice of life daily webcomic, mm -hmm. uh, since 2001 mm -hmm. and it is called the devil's panties um because what do they what do the kids call it uh not shark bait but uh click bait click click bait uh catfish uh <laughs> any one of those things? it was one of yeah it's one yeah. of those those bait and switch mm -hmm. um i i would say that you know oh it's not it's not that bad my mom reads it um yeah my mom's advice to me in college was never streak pregnant it's more of a waddle. Nobody <laughs> really wants to see that. <laughs> so that's not saying much. Um, yeah. So, so I, I did the math, and I was like, wait, when was my first Dragon Con? I I think my first Dragon Con was two thousand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and today somebody was like, oh, when's the when's the parade? And I was like, I don't know. And they were like, well, I've been coming to Dragon Con, Con for 10 years. I don't remember when the parade was. And I was like, yeah, I've been coming for 23 years. I still don't remember when the parade is. I think it's tomorrow. Anyway, so that's what I do. Yay! <laughs> Hi, I'm Comfort. And I'm Adam. And this is Theo Hello. here. <laughs> So we make comics and we've been doing it for years. We do Rainbow in the Dark and the Uniques and we did a big how-to book for Random House called the Complete Guide to Self-Publishing Comics, which, uh, irony would have it, is our one thing we haven't self-published ourselves. <laughs> and this is our partner, Theo, because we Aww. love her <laughs> and this job also takes now more than two people because it's such a big job. Yay, comics, yeah. Yeah. guys. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how many here, how many people here um, do a web comic? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, hold on, yeah. yeah. How many yeah. wanna do a web comic? Oh. Pretty much everybody else. So I like the half, like yes and yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that is the appropriate amount of trepidation with which to approach this. <laughs> I think I want. And realistic. To. Yeah. 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 I, oh, what a shame. Early, early days, somebody was like, "Oh yeah, doing a, a a comic, any comic, it eight, I think eight to ten percent of it is drawing the comic." And at yes. that point, I hit the sidewalk because I was like, "It takes me eight hours to draw the the comic." That math does not add up. <laughs> um, and one of the other uh, uh, comic guys I was talking to at the time, he was trying to find another studio for, for the artist, and he was like, I had no idea that doing comics meant you had to research real estate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, yeah. You have to research everything. If we were good at math, we wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. We love it. We do because we love So. Do we want to hand this off to the audience to just like ask questions and yeah. give them? Yeah, that like always seems to work. We've been doing this panel, I don't know, like Bill's been doing this yeah. panel for forever. Yeah. So, uh, and we just like showed up one day. <laughs> and they're like, that I mean, sounds good. We out. were invited. <laughs> yes. We didn't just no. wander no, around. No, like stage. I think Jenny, you no, said me. There, there was a lady who showed up at a panel and said, hey, I do a thing. Can I? Uh -huh. And we said, sure. And she took over the panel. Oh, and I remember we're like, that. who the crap is Spike? <laughs> <laughs> Spike now makes millions of dollars on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... So yeah, I'm fine with people barging in and taking <laughs> yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it turns out really well. Take uh, notes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah. questions about how to start, how to where to post, uh, how to make money on how how to how do you make money at web? Why are you looking at ah, No, I'm asking. I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Like how? Yeah, just whatever, whatever you want to ask, ask on. We are we're very good at this. That's right. Okay, then my question would be. Would it be better as someone who's just starting out to build their portfolio doing free art, and I know there's webtoon <coughs> websites to do, or would it be better to actually submit to contests, or does it depend on whether it's manga or comic, can, on which one you start can off Can I, with? oh, Jenny, you want to go? Well, and then well like, I have follow-up yeah. questions. Um, do you have a story, do you want to be the artist, or do you have a story that you want to want to tell? I think I have to get good enough at the artwork and sustain myself to make enough money before I can pay somebody. I'm better at the actual writing of it. Okay, so you need an I artist. I prefer. I can draw. I just don't want to. Okay. <laughs> yes. Exactly. It does Honestly, take a I like the art form, time. but my yeah. attention span is not that great. Yeah, the only okay. way to make a living as an artist is if you can't <laughs> help not drawing. Yeah. But, but if you have a story, go ahead and start drawing it. Uh, a yeah. webcomic is very forgiving as far as yeah. changing art is not right. very forgiving as very uh, well <laughs> it's no, changed I, the thing that I always point out to people when they you know ask about art and am I good enough am I bad enough the famous like you won't go five minutes as an artist without somebody telling you I can't draw stick figures and the thing I always point out is like one of the most popular webcomics of all time is just stick figures okay. <laughs> And nobody cares. X so XKCD. Right? So quality of art is subjective. It's entirely mm -hmm. subjective. And if the quality of writing and the quality of the content of what you're trying to do is good enough, people are going to care what the art is. The art sort of rises to the level mm -hmm. of the content. Now, I will quick say, though, you might, it depends on what kind of story and stuff that you have. Like, you know, our stuff is very different than both Bill and Jenny's. Because like we do very epic, like we do Rainbow in the Dark, and that's a, you know, punk rock urban fairy tale. We do the Uniques, and that's like Teen Titans. If it was an HBO series, and those are very well rendered, very like illustrated, like super thought out. Uniques is a story. A more that's classical just, like, comic book. Classical kind of comic. It takes a long time to do this with a team. And so the kind of art and the quality of art and stuff that you're looking for, especially if you're looking at being the writer and hiring an artist, you want to just be able to get money from other places. So we have friends who are writers, for instance, like who also work as computer engineers or something like that, that earns like a fair amount of money that then they can take and give to an artist. Now, if you do want to end up drawing the book, right, I would like start your, and it's say maybe a more detailed thing than a, you know, the quick stick figure thing that we talked about, all right? Let me clarify. I can actually draw, like yeah. I like doing it as a hobby, yeah. but I realized I couldn't sustain actually having to do it Okay. long term but I can do writing long term I think to address yeah. your actual question more pointedly start making your own story okay mm -hmm. so um, holding out for contests and competitions one thing you should know is a lot of times those are fronts they've already decided who they want to put forward oh. and they create mm -hmm. a contest around it as advertising and marketing oh, for nice. their product yes right. yeah. uh, so your odds of getting picked up in something like that are very low, and if you hang any expectation on that, and even more so, if you gauge your own skill or capacity by performance in some arbitrary nonsense contest, you could miss out on a lot of valuable time that you right. could have just been producing. And just be writing your butt off at yeah. this point, and be writing various stories. Be writing fan fiction, because that is also where you'll get followers, just like for fan art, you'll get followers there. Fan fiction will do the same for you. Now, if along the way a contest comes up that looks like it might be a good fit for the kind of thing you're doing, submit some of the Things chapters Things that you're produced. already doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because often they don't have restrictions on that right. sort of thing. You know, if you can double dip, by all means do so. But mm -hmm. don't wait for somebody else to give you permission to make comics. Mm -hmm. Just start making comics. Yeah. So in uh, in two th in two thousand one, uh, I 
I had uh, I was going to Savannah College of Art and Design. I was majoring in comic books, and I always assumed I would I would go and do comics, whatever that meant. Yeah. And uh, a housemate uh, was posting their comics every day online, and I saw people graduate from art college, go get the day job to pay the bills, to pay off the loans, and then they never got back around to the art. Yeah. And so I saw that posting a comic every day, posting something every day, stuck me to a work ethic, stuck me to people are reading this, so I have to post something. And so because I was doing it every day, I was, I was learning a huge amount on storytelling and on layouts and all of that and and your style is going to change i knew an artist who went back and he kept redrawing the first chapter yeah. don't do that yeah. the, the first garfield yeah. does not look like the current garfield um and so then it took six years to build up the kind of following that you need to quit your day job I could walk up to a publisher and say, I have this many readers, they're going to buy the book, whatever it is that's printed. Now that takes time to build up, mm -hmm. it's that build that following. So if you can build the following as you're creating the story and fleshing it out and, and teaching yourself things and learning things about the story. And uh, the guy that did The Martian was posting right. it like as a, just as a chapter thing and he had People started reading it, and he had NASA and he had mathematicians who were checking his work, <laughs> and and so it's as accurate as you could get on on the scientific front. So it's a, a wonderful way of. I mean, you're giving it away for free, but you're also getting a lot of feedback, yeah. and so I I think that you should you should do it. Mm -hmm. You know, draw it as you can. Try to set up a schedule. Okay, posting schedules. Yeah, yeah. This um, is just for everybody. So, so for me, I want to post every single day because I find that in 10 comics, one of them is good. I don't know which one that is. <laughs> and my husband's like, oh, you should only post th three times a week. That way it's the good ones. And I'm like, I have no idea which ones are right. the good ones. Um, now, if I can't make it, if I have posted a stick figure that said, I am covered in baby vomit. The comic is not going to happen tomorrow. And that, that got the most likes <laughs> of the year. I'm like, y'all are, are wreckers. <laughs> um, and so there's a, there's a back and forth because um, in slot machines, if you don't get the payout on a regular basis, you're not going to play. So when you go and check, if you say, oh, I'm going to post three times a week or I'm going to post once a month or I'm going to post every day, you have to stick to that schedule. Mm -hmm. Even if it's just a filler type of, on Saturdays, I post a black panel that says, what not to say in the bedroom. And I actually go back through my archives of comics and just cherry pick yeah. uh, a word balloon that fits. Um, yeah, some of them are super inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but what you're doing if you post daily is you're training your audience. They will expect the comic on a certain schedule so they're used to a routine and you have got them in the palm of your hand then once they're you're part of their routine they can come and expect to see the cartoon there that's your job to have the cartoon there when they expect it and, and then at the end of the six years when you have a book you can say, okay, now here's the, or I, I actually had, the book was going to be in comic shops, and I said, hey, here's the order number, go to your diamond, you have to order a certain number, you have to have sold a certain number of books before they will carry your book. <laughs> and so because I had this following on the internet, I went to them and said, here's the diamond order code for the comp, go to the comic shop and ask for this book. And so I was an unknown, but I fulfilled that, that order number. So posting every day means that you build the following so that when you do a book, you can say, okay, I have people who will buy it. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, it's more important that you maintain a level of quality that will keep people wanting to come back. So don't set a schedule you can't reasonably keep. Mm -hmm. You're better posting every week if every week is what it takes for you to produce something that's going to keep that level going that's going to keep people coming back routine is very important 
you don't want to fall off and if it's too far in between updates like updating monthly you better have a meaningfully large update for people to consume. right and also know your strengths like jenny is really pithy like just <laughs> I, yeah. yeah i know you okay. are i know you are so like even your quick silly things are gold right and so like you oh, understand shit. you know <laughs> ah! Ah. imposter syndrome is a thing yes, yes. <laughs> it is a heart I, I just went to a comics camp in alaska mm -hmm. that had some of the top web comic people in the United States and Canada. And we all walked in there and they said, we all have to check our imposter syndrome at the door. And every person in there was like, but I thought I was the only one. So, <laughs> so sorry I, to, to no, cut you no, off no, as far no. as. But like, you know, depending on what you're doing again, like what we do now, uh, and like, if you look up our artwork and stuff like that, like really detailed stuff, it takes, a lot of people uh, yeah. to do and, it. and knowing how much we're releasing when we update on webtoon it amounts to approximately three to four pages of a published comic okay. and we have to be able to produce that at a regular enough clip that we can generally stay up with that in, release. we would try and do it every week yes huh. yeah um, so know what your limits are mm -hmm. know what you can reasonably produce mm -hmm. and once you think you know what you can reasonably produce, step back a second and take a look at what that schedule actually was. Right. Because reasonable means something different to somebody with their head down in the trenches, busting their guns out over mm -hmm. this drawing. Mm -hmm. When you step back and say, could I reasonably work 12 hours a day for seven days a week? Which is what we do. You can't. Nobody can. You're going to fall down. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, said I said reasonable. Uh, we uh, did it. It was we not do it. reasonable. We just do it and we do break down sometimes. Yes. And it yes. does cause you to fall behind. And it does cause right. you to not have a very kind cushion behind you in case mistakes get made or other things happen in your life because that is right. going to come Theo down. Theo gets right. to watch us sometimes. We're like, ah! What, what is it like to watch us say, ah? Well, that's why I'm here to help. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, today, if we didn't have Theo at the table, like, it was so busy, like, I don't know what we were it gonna do. Nice. It would have been crazy. But this is something you work your way up to. Yeah. You know how long we've been behind the table at a con, guys? 20 years, <laughs> yeah. 2003. So set a schedule, make it something you can actually do. Be kind to yourself. Like you have to work really hard in the beginning regardless, but if you put yourself in a position where you can't keep up that speed, you're gonna burn yourself yeah. out way too fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cartooning is a marathon, um, yeah. except it's a marathon that never ends. Uh, forget the, tw the 26 miles, this never ends. So it's not a sprint. You can't treat it like a sprint. Um, sorry, I lost it. I lost uh, it. You know what, let's get another question. Yes, yes. I was gonna. Oh, the, if, you, if you're thinking about doing a web comic, do it. You're, you're never gonna be ready. Yeah. The art yes. is never gonna be ready. Your art is never gonna be good enough. The, you know, the, oh, well, I want the story to be hashed out. It's never, the story is never going to be finished or ready. Just start it. Go do it. You know, um, now, you know, there's plenty of, of servers as far as, oh, we just went through the social media, <laughs> Mastodon, Blue Sky, yeah. Lemmy, the Twitter and the Facebook, uh, Instagram. Now, number one, buy your domain name. If you go to devilspanties.com, that's the fan site, because oops. Um, <laughs> so buy the domain name, do the web hosting, put together your, your website, because all of that social media leads to your website that you ideally have advertising on, and so you make some sort of income yeah. from the advertising. Yeah. But, but yeah, make, make sure you have a domain name, you keep that up to date, and you put that domain name on every one of your comics so that when you spread them out, on on Instagram and on all of the social medias and maybe somebody on Reddit steals it and posts it and it gets 30,000 views. <laughs> Ask me how I know. 
um, <laughs> you at least have your website on there somewhere, so yeah. you get some traffic back to your own. So, so yeah, as far as, you know, go do it. Go, go get the domain name and, and set it up and, and just start posting. Yeah, that's 101. All right, guys, more questions. Who's got more questions? I, I saw three people twitch. That was great. <laughs> Do you think uh, web comics lends itself to different genres or narratives than paper or more traditional comics or even other mediums of storytelling? And if so, what, and could you maybe talk a little about that? Have, have you read Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud? I don't believe I have. Ooh, wow. we can sound really smart yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Let's quote. <laughs> well. Because, okay, in the, in the early days, people were still, I mean, they're still exploring it. Mm -hmm. There's animated web comics, and there's an uh, endless, what do they call the it? The infinite scroll. canvas. The infinite, infinite canvas, canvas, a scroll. Yeah. There was a comic that I saw that you just scrolled right forever. Yeah. It was amazing. Um, so, yeah, there's definitely things you can do, because it's, it's just the internet. It's, you know, and I think that it yeah. is always changing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's also more welcoming to experimentation <laughs> with genre and style because you don't have to convince a publisher to pay for it. Um, and, you know, publishers, the money is notoriously cowardly. <laughs> it likes formula and it likes to repeat what made money before. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do something differently, if you want to do something that's not like what you're reading, web comics give you a much easier platform to jump that kind of idea. Uh, it takes, I think, a lot more courage to get into web comics because you don't have a safety net under you to catch you. Mm -hmm. It's also, especially in the beginning, the internet, the internet made a lot possible. Uh, it made everything possible, theoretically. Uh, it has never been easier, it has never been more affordable to do your own story, to produce your own comic. But you have gone from being a small fish in a big pond to being a piece of kelp in the ocean. The amount of noise out there, the amount of stuff out there, the amount of people out there trying to hype their product who do not have a product worthy of hype, it's ridiculous. And you are now trying to get people to give up time from their schedule to check you out instead. That's very hard to do. You're gonna feel like you are just, you know, screaming into the darkness and you will wonder if any human beings exist out there in the void maybe for a long time. It's hard, it can be very demoralizing in those early days when you're putting all of this blood, sweat, and tears to something, hit release, and you watch the view count go, n no, like nothing happens. And you check and you check and like, oh, oh, it's going up, but that's just you refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember the first time that I posted something and I got like, I got like a hundred views and I was like, I don't even know a hundred people. <laughs> Someone I don't know has read my comic. This is amazing. Right. And now a hundred views this day and age. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. In this economy? In this yeah. economy. hundred views? I mean, God, I wish. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Realization of, of, the, of the difference. Like yeah. you mm -hmm. said, it used to be yeah. pond and now it's yeah. ocean. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like every time I check, one more person has looked. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, so you have to have endurance. You do. You have to be willing to put up with the silence for a while. You have to have, you have to be lean and you have to be mean and you have to push and push. Right. And uh, like, there's a difference between, so I'm going to say this and this is going to sound like a jerk thing. So there is this thing right now and it's very understandable and we do want to do this and it's called self-care. But there is a difference between like working hard and getting the job done. And then I think sort of what self-care sometimes has become. Self-care sometimes has become an excuse to not do things. Yeah. And you know. Self-centeredness is not self-care. Right. Is Jenny's Jenny's oh, going to do a thing. No, I'm writing stuff down because oh. I, I don't want to interrupt you. This is oh, great, okay. but I also have things I want to say about oh, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, all right. So anyways, like you do need to have you time. You do need to do stuff, but you have to be, again, realistic with yourself. Like if you want to do this, 
you're giving up a lot of your time, mm -hmm. a lot of your day. It's going to be hard. You are going to have breakdowns. It is going to be really freaking tough. You have to be an amount of crazy to pursue right, this. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, you know what we're doing here? We're drawing sketches for people at this con because we have to get them done in the morning. That's what we're doing. You have to be that level of you cannot stop because that's how you get where you get. You're probably not a Nepo baby and have mommy and daddy paying for everything and you would be shocked how many little Nepo babies are running around comics just Acting paying. like they earned it. Oh, I just have, I'm a writer and I have 40 people making comics for me. My life is really hard. I had one, somebody once asked me what, what hobbies I had. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand yeah. the question. And they were yeah. like, well, what do you do in your spare time? And I was like, you, you mean when I'm sleeping? <laughs> I don't, I still don't understand the question. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah, of the. You, you say what you want to say, Jenny. Well, so, oh, you, you, uh, uh, there was a self-care, there was the posting it moving forward. Self-care to me is not reading the comments. <laughs> <laughs> ish. Okay, ish. I say ish. Um, I post and I move forward, and I post and I move forward. Sometimes I have time to read the comments. And, and what I adore, uh, what you post is going to have a big in impact on who reads it. <laughs> what I mean is, if you are angry and bitter and mean, and you do that, you do a comic that is that, your readers are going to be angry and bitter and mean. Um, I try to be kind in my comic, uh, mostly because uh, the people in my comic are real and I have to see them and interact with them and I am scared uh, <laughs> of offending them. So, so yeah, so usually I try to be nice. And so the majority, of, if somebody says something in the comments that, that is crass, usually all the other commenters go, you know, say it more elo they, t they say shut up better than I could. Um, someone is going to say something mean about your comic. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, I had somebody who posted a paragraph of um, you should die. <gasps> and like you should die of cancer or something. It was dying. Ah! My initial response was, are you okay? <laughs> something like, do you need me to call somebody? Like, so, so usually I consider the source. Um, if it's a constructive criticism of the comic, yes, totally. I had one person who was like, the cat in this comic is, is not, doesn't have any perspective. Mm. The way that you've drawn them, they look like they're floating. And I was like, that's fair. Oh, you have a comic too. Oh, what's a Sprite comic? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to listen to anything you have to say about perspective or shading. Or, so, so you're gonna, and also, if somebody is getting upset about my comic, I'm like, yes. They have feelings about it. I evoked this emotion, this feeling. So, so yeah, you're, you're going to post and somebody's going to say something mean and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. And then you realize they're not saying it about you. And, and they're not even saying about it about their com your comic. Mm -hmm. um, they could just be jumping up and down and asking for attention. Uh, and mostly you try to just keep moving forward. And just yeah. keep swimming. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So self-care is you just keep swimming. Yeah. And part of self-care is, especially early on, when you're not getting any outside feedback, at some level you have to just enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. That yeah. just the act of drawing something on a piece of paper makes you go, yeah, that's cool. Um, that, that can keep you going for a long time. Yeah. All right, other questions, guys. So this is a little more technical. Most of the work I do is contract based, old school, non photo blue pen or pencils and dip ink. Wow. Yes, mm -hmm. I want to see those. I have a few of them on my phone if you want to see them after. Yes. Um, the question I have is if I'm looking at transitioning into web comics, yes. what tech would I be looking at? Like Photoshop and Illustrator yep. or templates? Because yep. I went to graphic design school, so I'm familiar with those. Uh, <laughs> you're looking at uh, Clip Studio Pro? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
and that's basically your program that you're going to okay. use you know for most everything we still letter in illustrator because we feel like it's you know yeah. it, got gives, more it gives a lot control. of flexibility but you can do it happily in other programs that will that cost you a fraction clip studio uh, and that aren't owned by the devil <laughs> yes. I don't like throwing a dollar to the devil on a bad. You have to throw those dollars to the devil, though, yeah. because I mean, if you could pay him in one lump sum, then yes. <laughs> yeah, but I then you, but then you might own something, and they can't yeah. have that. Yeah. Well, at that point, you're dealing with a crossroads demon, and you make a deal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Uh, uh, so yes. Uh, yeah, oh. Clip Studio Pro is is the way to go. There are other similar programs. There's room to play around. Right, and, and, and you can find get tablets. You. you don't have to get a you know Wacom tablet or whatever. You know, you could yeah, get yeah. like a Huon and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, or even just iPad. A lot of people are drawing. Yeah, a lot of people are right. drawing yeah. iPad. I'm, I'm still tablet. trying to learn Procreate. Yeah. I'm yeah. still. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. Who else might have questions on this so day? So when oh. I started, I wanted to do a book, and that was my end goal. Um, the Understanding Comics by Scott, Scott McCloud talks about what's your end goal. Is your end goal to just do the comic? Is it to be be picked up and syndicated? Is it to work for a company? You know, there's lots of different avenues to go on. I wanted, I wanted to do a book, and I wanted it to be in a comic shop where I didn't work. <laughs> and I achieved that. And then I said, oh, that doesn't come with a paycheck. I should have been more specific. <laughs> <laughs> and then I found out, oh, the publisher is using any profits for the room party at San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> I need to be more specific. So I want to get picked up by a publisher. So, so I was doing, I don't even remember how I started on my format. Uh, it didn't print, the format didn't print well. I found that I had to do three comics per page to get it to fit in a standard comic book form, which meant I needed, I had 365 comics a year and that only had a hundred page graphic novel and that's not enough to, to charge $20 for. So mm -hmm. I shot myself in the foot. Um, so if you're looking to do printing and you're good, you want to start a comic, look at the cheapest size to print. That's not necessarily a standard comic book. Uh, I print with uh, Amazon, has a printing company where you can print one book and you don't have to uh, rent out a storage unit to hold the other 999 books mm -hmm. um, because printing in Canada is a minimum print run of mm -hmm. a thousand. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I had a couple of comics where I went ahead and found, I think it's like four by six or something is a standard. and so that if you do the comic pages by that and do it in black and white, then it is way cheaper to print. Um, and also uh, uh, archive. I started in 2001. I didn't know what DPI was. <laughs> I did, all I knew was the internet took 72. And so that's what I saved it as. Oh, and no. oh. <laughs> two years later, I went to print my first book and I went, wait, what? And had to redraw. Uh. The comic, which is why my book one printed book has a lot of extra features in it, because <laughs> um, they redrew all of the first year. So, so that I mean, that's depending on as far as the internet is is limitless for how you could do a comic. You can do full color animated, you know, as mm. big as a wall. But if you also want to be printed, um, also keep that in mind of what mm. you want to do with it and that's my how to make money at it was I wanted to sell books mm -hmm. I'm re gearing that now that I'm like oh to sell the books I have to actually have a storage unit that I pay two hundred dollars mm -hmm. a month on um, and so mm -hmm. yeah trying trying to figure out what your end result is, yeah. is mm -hmm. very different yeah, the way we always put it is don't plan for your first product plan for your last product mm -hmm. what is the final form that this thing is going to take Mm -hmm. and plan based on that. Mm -hmm. If your final form is like a traditional graphic novel format, make sure that your design takes that into mind. Right. We don't like as much as like, uh, who reads Webtoon here? A couple and of people, yeah. Of so, right, it's yeah. scrolls vertical up and scroll. down, vertical mm -hmm. scroll. Mm -hmm. you know, as much as we love things like Lore Olympus or Let's Play or whatever, you know what, when they get put into book form, 
they do not look very good. And that's because they were not built for mm -hmm. a book. They were built for the vertical scroll. And so you're like, oh, it was so nice on the webtoon. And this is, I guess it's fine. Mm -hmm. And so what we had to do is we had to say, okay, well, we make money through Patreon and we make money through selling books. And those are our two mm -hmm. things. Because Webtoon is lovely, but Webtoon always had like a lot of caveats and stuff mm -hmm. like that and a lot of what you can and can't do, et cetera, et cetera to you know, be one of their originals. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we would do is we would make our comics in traditional comic page format, and then we chop them up strategically to work in Webtoon. And if you look at one of our comics on there, especially season two of Uniques, when we're really starting to figure things out, you're like, this looks really good. It looks exactly like you'd want a Webtoon to look. But it is originally done in a comic format, it's just how do you jury rig that for this other format? Because mm -hmm. that's not the final format. Webtoon yeah. isn't mm -hmm. the printed pages. And the reason that I generally think that it is never a good idea to think of the web format as your final form mm -hmm. is because that's going to change. Mm -hmm. You never know. You know, Webtoon is in a, a weird place right now where it feels like it's teetering over a cliff. Uh, it's been seeing a lot of drops in readership across the board even the big dogs mm -hmm. are losing a lot of readers mm -hmm. now and who knows what the next one's going to look like maybe it'll look kind of like webtoon but webtoon looked different than most of the stuff that mm -hmm. came before it so if you are designing your thing for a platform if and when that platform changes you're stuck mm -hmm. if you are planning it for whatever the final form is going to be then no matter what shifts and moves happen to its digital release, then you can move with those. You can flow right. with those. You can recut mm -hmm. them, move it however you need right. to do. We even put our webtoon, like when we did our final resize, you know, reformat for webtoon, we still did it 300 DPI. Yes. Because you never know when webtoons or somebody else is like, hey, remember when we were doing it this DPI? Well, there's a rule change. Everybody has to do this DPI now. So you have to go back into your old comics and change all the sizes over again. And when you're blowing up pixels, it looks bad. Mm -hmm. So plan ahead mm -hmm. or else you're going to, you know, get hit in the ass in a real tough way that you're not going to like. You don't want a bad surprise. Yeah. yeah. As, as soon as I went to digital, I started scanning at 600 DPI and I've done it ever since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have your, your archival and yeah. And yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm finding that I'm getting more readers with hashtags. Mm, yes, and oh yeah. And it's very weird. Early, early on, I was doing a comic about trying to buy a house and mm -hmm. climbing that paperwork. And I did a quick Google search for climbing gear to try to add some detail to this, this illustration of climbing. And so I drew myself wearing climbing shoes, which is a very specific thing. People went nuts. Climbers were like, you climb? This is amazing. I need to print this out. This is... And so there's like these little, like if you find that niche market, it's not, you know, you're, it's not a lot of people out there mm -hmm. doing it. And that's why those few people that are into it will be like, oh my God, there's a comic about this one kind of geode that this one kind of like rock scientists are into. And, and so as far as like, you know, okay, I'm doing, this, I'm doing this comic, I'm posting it on my website, I'm also posting it on the social media, but you're adding a hashtag that kind mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. who are into this one weird thing, you yep. know, makes their way back to it. Yeah, that's how I found furries. <laughs> <laughs> Because Kevin and Kel is about a rabbit and a wolf and the, and the, and the marriage they've cr created. And in 1995, I'd never heard of furries. Wait, there was... In 19... Yeah, no, no, because they didn't... When did furries start? Oh, well, they've been here. Yeah. <laughs> they just we didn't. all watched watch the yeah. Fox Robin Hood. Yeah. They've okay, been yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, yeah. was, it, was, it was Gadget. Yeah. yeah, it was gadget. Sorry, oh. they just didn't start Kippendale's congregating girl. and yeah. self-identifying until yeah. later on. Yes, but I started doing a web comic about a rabbit and a wolf, and immediately I found fans. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> They're wonderful, though. Yeah. They're really yeah. wonderful. They are. They're just yeah. They are. Yeah. 
Basically. Mostly harmless. Most, to, I mean, that's to every, quote I mean, Douglas Adams. Mostly he's doing a lot of lifting. <laughs> 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 All right, let's take another question. Where? Hello. Hello. Hello, Courtney. Hi. Okay. So, file organization and storage. Mm -hmm. How do you go about that? Because uh, yeah, yeah, Jen hi. decided. <laughs> That's a great question. Nobody's ever, we've been doing this for 20 yeah. years. Nobody's ever asked. Yeah. I, I can't have final product version two, version eight, version nine. <laughs> what was, wait, there was a two part question. Give me it again because oh, I went down uh, the rabbit hole. How do you organize your files and uh, how do you go about storing those? Because I'm sure 20 years of web comics adds up. Uh, uh, uh. mm -hmm. <laughs> the truth. Oh, God. My, oh, husband yeah. took, my husband took one look and went, I'm sorry, how much of your life is on this yeah. computer? Where else is it? Just on this computer? Oh, honey. Um, we have backups, we have backups and backups, and when we yeah. go out of the house, we bring a backup with yeah. us, and we put yeah. it back, and we give it mm -hmm. back up to a neighbor, and there's a, oh yeah, yeah. no, he's, he's left backups mm -hmm. in like like storage vaults. And, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, no, definitely, you know, backups, because this is, this is a huge amount of your life. Um, yeah, I just bought an external hard drive last month. Just yeah. to... <laughs> Bill. <laughs> just? No, re a replacement. Oh! Because oh. <laughs> the, ready to die. Because the previous okay. one died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, we've had that happen. Um, yeah, don't trust the cloud. Yeah, it's not reliable. Yeah, they'll be like. I mean, it's nice oh. for a backup. It's nice. It is nice. It's nice for, yeah, yeah, but don't do your but whole don't thing rely there. On it. Yeah. Like Things. I think Adobe was just like, yeah, the cloud that they have, we're gonna not do that. So if you don't get yourself off, well, <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, we we put everything on a hard drive and, and put it in a in a vault and we put yeah. it and then we do automatic backups. And, yeah. Uh, keep a cloud backup, but then keep at least a couple other hard backups. Um, it is, or can be, depending on how much storage you need, cheaper to buy an internal hard drive and then an enclosure that you can plug it into mm -hmm. to access it outside your computer. External hard drives can charge you a lot of money for portability, but they're not as good or as reliable as an internal hard drive is. You can get an enclosure. I've got a, a just a little guy. You plug in like a like an old cartridge for a Super Nintendo. You take your internal hard drive, plug it into the thing, and you can but read I, it by USB. I think too, you can machine. you can get a uh, like external like hard drive too, and like it just uh, like things are so much cheaper than they used to be like you know i remember when an external hard drive was like a zip drive and you'd be like well this is 20 megabytes we you know? <laughs> so yeah exactly so you like you can just put a whole lot more info like on something and if it's not video if it's just like you know visual images you can put it there so quickly then file like naming your files properly you need to find a naming like it style that you're going to use. It doesn't necessarily matter what it is, it's just, but it needs to be consistent across mm -hmm. all of your materials. So that you can always look for it and then... Yes. So mm -hmm. you can easily... When you open up a folder, you need to, at a glance, be able to get a sense of what everything is, where it all is. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at? Yep. Yep. So so I do the, the date. So... and And... The real date, not the American date. You start with the year, and then the month, and then the day, and that way it's all there. And then it's the it's easier to sort that way. Yeah. You know, with a quick sort by name, you get everything in year order, mm -hmm. and then you can check the month. And that it just it's the computer reads that stuff faster mm -hmm. and easier. I've yep. got a, a file order. for the comics, and then within that file, I have a file for the sketches. And so that if I'm scrolling through, it's all the final product. Mm -hmm. And then if I want to go back and find the, I have a, a, I saved the stick figures and I've saved the pencils and then I've saved the final inks. We have folders full of reference for each of the characters that we keep updated as things change and grow. We have a folder in which anytime we do a detailed, nicely done background for a panel, we keep it 
store it as a separate image and if we go back to that location again we can use pieces of it here and there maybe save us a little time on a couple of panels out of the page we have a whole set of paper dolls basically of our characters that we change their outfits with facial expressions when we're doing webtoon, webtoon the nature of webtoon is such that by you can fit a lot more dialogue onto a single panel of a comic printed page than you can on a panel as you're scrolling through Webtoon. So oftentimes we have to insert extra headshots so that we can stretch that dialogue You'll out. You'll see and that if you go look at the books, especially again, Unique Season 2. And if we had to redraw new headshots every time we released a new chapter, that would just be an enormous amount of time and an inordinate waste. So instead we have a wide selection of headshots that we reuse and can swap outfits mm -hmm. on so that it is appropriate. Yep. And as we other draw other figures and faces, we are just like put it in the pile. Save it. Throw it in the <laughs> folder. Throw it in the headshot folder. Exactly. I, I yeah. save a file that has all the layers on it. Yeah. Because when I put together the books, I, I have a friend who edits it and she's like, oh, hey you got right. the the, the spelling wrong on this, or you've got the facial expression wrong on this, and it's unforeseen that it's way easier if the word balloon is on one, one uh, uh, layer, and the text is on another layer, and the inks are on another, and the background's on another, it's way easier to move stuff oh, yeah. Never yeah. flatten yeah. your original file. Yeah. Save a copy. Yeah. yeah. Save a copy, name the copy, so you know what it is. Yeah. You don't want, you don't want like, page two, copy one, page two, copy two, copy. name the copy. You want to know yeah. what it is. You don't want to have to open yeah. these files over and over to figure and, it out. And if you have, like, you know, a friend or, like, a spouse or, you know, whatever, like, you know, sometimes even Theo will be like, don't forget to do this. <laughs> All the time. Don't yeah. forget to do that. Do you see that? When and we're, we'll be like, ah, shit. We do art streams on Twitch Tuesday nights. and. Yes. We have people who've been longtime viewers who will chime in in the chat and be like, have you saved? Did you save recently? <laughs> save early, save often. Save again. Save save early, you should save, save again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but don't save after you flattened and minimized it. Save a oh. copy. Oh. I do that once every yeah. two years. Here's uh. a save a copy before you do anything to it. That way you don't forget. I was listening to a really good book and I wasn't paying attention because to post it on the internet you post at 72 dpi. So you flatten it and you resize mm -hmm. it down real small and you save it as a PNG in a separate folder. I've got a folder yeah. for, the, for the big files and then I've got a folder for the small files. And, and that's the one that goes up yeah, on the yeah. internet. And I, and I accidentally saved over yeah. the big file. Yeah. Whee! We are all of us yeah. screwy dum dums full of mistakes. Yeah. All of us. You've got to figure out what is the what are the mistakes that you are always making and how can you yeah, prevent yourself does. from destroying yourself. Yeah, thank you, Matt Time Machine. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I, it was a day later. Uh, I, yeah. I realized oh, it a day later. And my husband was sitting there doing the time machine. He's yeah. like, we can go back to Thursday. And I was like, that was, it happened on Saturday. He was like, ah, oh, yeah, you're screwed. You can yeah. go back a ways on Dropbox. That you can. That's nice. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah um, I, I constantly am locking my layers when I'm working because I am always on the wrong yes. layer. Yes. I <laughs> no matter what I do. Pencils. I inked the goddamn yeah. pencil right? layer. Yeah. Yes. And it's like, yeah. I deleted that layer. How did it come back <laughs> so I could work on it for the last <laughs> I, I hour? I've done too many times, and now I'm somewhere I don't even So understand. I am always, and, and he's too, I'll be like, ah, and they'll be like, what? I'm like, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You're on the wrong layer. Is it maybe the thing that is always the reason I go, The ah. bane of your existence? <laughs> so yes. I'm always locking layers. It, better to take a second to have to unlock it than to. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got a template. I've got a comics template. It is, it is the base background layer. It is a black box. It is a white arc or a zigzag. It is a white box, pencils, inks, uh, lines for shading, word balloon, text. There are text uh, creation programs where you write the alphabet. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you download it and then mm -hmm. you type your own font. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, and so, and so that way I just, I've already, oh, and I've already got the, uh, the panels. Um, and so I just open that up and, and if I want like an easy background, I erase around the figure that, that white file. And then I've got this black swoosh in the background. Ooh. That's, that is yeah. magic. Ooh. Well, Ooh. That was, uh, who's the guy that does Buffy? He's in the comic and pop, pop art. It's George, George's Genty. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. George's. Oh, it's lovely. George's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
so yeah there's there's tricks to cut corners there's mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. tricks uh comic major college uh the <laughs> professor said that there is um filet mignon and mashed potatoes you don't want an entire meal that is that is filet mignon that is all rich and detailed and it has all the backgrounds and the shading and the vast landscapes you want some mashed potatoes you want something mm -hmm. simple and basic to go with it. it it also that's like you know letting the eye rest yeah, yeah. Yep. It needs a time out to then be like, ooh, fancy thing, ah, uh, fancy thing. Uh, <laughs> there's there's yes. definitely ways to do, like, if if it's right before Dragon Con, some of the comics are really close-up headshots mm. with no background. <laughs> yeah. And that's the, that takes maybe like a, an hour right. to do that comic. Yeah. So so there's ways that you can you can cut cut time yeah. and cut corners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, train there. your brain to be pragmatic. Um, oftentimes, if I find myself spending a long time on a single piece of a page, mm -hmm. whatever that piece might be, in the back of my head, I'm already thinking, there has to be a way that I can do this more efficiently. Yeah. And we've reworked our job a lot. a lot so that it's more efficient and also we can easily bring in other people to mm -hmm. be like, here, here's how it do it's done. And somebody can be like, aha. Yeah. Uh, the panel borders. We set those as a separate layer at the very top of the file hierarchy so that when we're doing color on any individual panel, we don't have to worry about staying inside the lines. <laughs> we can go out and into those border spaces. So when we're doing like splash effects or you know laser beams yeah. or whatever, Again, we don't have to like the, cut yeah. the edges of the borders right. in order to keep them clean. We just do whatever underneath. Right. I can always tell when I was listening to a really good book on tape because the backgrounds are excessively detailed. Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't have anything else to ink, but we've gotten to the really good part of the book, so I'm just going to keep working on this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. I think we're we about uh, I think we're about, I think we're yeah. basically at time. Yeah. Where yes. can people find us? Oh, well, uh, two places. So we are... This weekend, if you want to visit us, uh, we are in Artist Alley at table, is it 4.30? 4.30. Yeah. So we're in, we're all in Comic and Pop Art Alley. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So table 4.30, we're also running other panels. So tomorrow we're running, uh, let's see here. We're running Learn How to Draw Anything that is going to be at America's Mart. And then at we're one at 1 o'clock. And then on 1 o'clock on Sunday, it's going to be Story Doctors, where you got a story like problem, bring it to us, we'll fix it. Yeah. And on Learn How to Draw Anything, you just say, What do you want to draw? I'll, I'll show you how. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whatever it is. And then if you want to find us on the internet webs at Comfort at Adam. We're at Comfort at Adam everywhere. And if you go on to like Webtoon and stuff, the Uniques and Rainbow in the Dark. Yep. There you go. That's okay. it. Okay.